David Goggins is a beta male. So today's question comes from a viewer who simply wants to know, yo, Elliot, what are your thoughts on David Goggins? So I found out about David Goggins probably around the same time that most of you did, probably about 10 years ago. And I didn't really watch many of his videos or interviews or anything like that until a friend of mine said, you really got to check out this guy. So instead I bought his book, his audio book, uh, Can't Hurt Me. And I was like, that is a great title. And he's on the cover wearing a Navy uniform. I was like, this is my guy. Then I started listening to the book and I got to be completely honest. I don't remember 90% of what's in that book, but one big pointer stuck out to me. One big fly in the soup stuck out to me. One big idea that has not left me in terms of how I see David Goggins, and that is the way he talks about his dad. Now, he calls his dad abusive, right? And it, there were some stories in the book where his dad was pretty tough, tough on him and his brothers, maybe his mom, I don't remember specifically. But his dad, to me, sounded like a gangster, like a good gangster, like a guy who overcame adversity in his life, built his own business, a black man building his own business at a time when maybe it was a bit tougher. He's a good provider. He provided lots of abundance for David in his life. He was somewhat wealthy, he lived in a white neighborhood, right? So not only does his dad have a business, but he's an upward moving man. So he's a wealthy man, he's, a, he's an upward moving man. He sounded like an alpha male to me, like he wouldn't take shit from people. He carried a weapon, you know, he was willing to do what it took to ascend, to win, to be a leader, to be a father, to be a businessman in all these ways that we admire in people today. In fact, Learning about his father reminded me of Andrew Tate. His dad sounds like a 1970s Andrew Tate. And as I'm reflecting on this, I imagine Andrew Tate's dad is a lot like David Goggins' dad, minus the abuse. And I go like this with abuse because I don't remember any of the really abusive stories. I'm not really sure how abusive he really was. In fact, that word abuse is thrown around uh, in order to well, destroy men, right? How many of you are divorced or know someone who's divorced uh, because their wife said they're abusive? I had this happen with one of my friends or a guy that used to come to my gym who is like a short, chubby, funny guy who drank a little bit too much. And his wife wanted to divorce him and said he was emotionally abusive. I know this guy and I know he's not abusing you. But they throw this word around because, well, victimhood is seen as a virtue in this day. And I'm not saying, David, I have a lot of really good things to say about as I move on here. But my first instinct was, this guy's a beta male who doesn't appreciate the hard work and the uniqueness of his dad. Like I said, his dad reminds me of an Andrew Tate. And Andrew Tate is a unique guy. And Andrew Tate's dad was probably a lot like Goggins' dad, which is a lot like my dad. Both of those guys, all those guys, remind me of my dad. My dad beat us when I was a kid. I would never say he abused us, but he, he headbutt me. I'll always remember that, but I've never told that story. Anything I say about my father is, I venerate my father. I talk about how when I was a beta male, I resented my father. But if you, if you wanna hear about all the abuse that I had, yeah, my dad, I remember one time, my dad chased me up the stairs, got me in a corner and headbutted me. That was the most humiliating beating I've gotten. But that was probably the last beating I got. But I got several beatings before that when I was young. My dad would terrorize us when we didn't listen to him or his mother, or, or our mother, right? I remember, me and my siblings joke about it now. Like remember, the, like my dad would stand in the doorway so that you couldn't go anywhere. And it was like, he was like, and then he would say, if you want to go, you got to come this way. And of course, you know, you're going to get snatched, right? You're going to get hit. Ellis talks about that a lot, my younger brother. My younger brother got, got it the worst, actually. 
because he had a big mouth. So my dad would make his mouth bleed, right? So I, the point here is that I've never complained about my dad. I only venerate my dad because it was my dad that made me the kind of man that I am today, where I'm a tough guy. And I beat myself up with weights. Now, let's talk quickly. I have an outline here, but now I'm going off script. David, you are the man that you are because of your dad. You, do you get this? The beatings that your dad gave you when you were younger were practice for the fucking beatings that you give yourself right now. You are a masochist. You beat yourself. Who goes through all that kind of military training? I, I know you've been through like multiple military trainings. Who subjects themselves to that kind of beating but someone who wants to get beat? That's a crazy thing about being a masochist. And I know you may or may not know what I'm talking about, but according to character structure, there are those of us who hunker down and beat ourselves up. I happen to be a lot like a masochist too. Most people who get into extreme sports like strongman powerlifting, that extreme shit that you do or David does when he's running, you gotta be a masochist. And the only reason why you even know that you could subject yourself to that kind of beating and, and, and overcome that kind of beating is because your dad beat you. In fact, I, I'm gonna go out on a limb here right now, which is not that much of a limb, it's sort of a, it was always this way until recently, but like we need to beat our kids a little bit more. I'm talking about abuse, right? But that's such a fuzzy term right now that it's like if you, you know, you, you just slap your kids. Sometimes they need to be slapped, sometimes they need to be pinched. I didn't do a lot of that with my kids because I grew up in a beta male world where they said that dads are abusive. And I remember my dad doing that to me. I can tell you, think in retrospect, I wish I beat my kids a little bit more. But it all turned out well. We need to bring back the beatings. Imagine we bring back the beatings, boys wouldn't be such beta males. We got a lot of single mothers raising boys and there's no discipline. You had a father, you had a father. You had a father. You had a father, a black man had a father, a wealthy father, an upward moving father a present father. They say that children that grow up in homes where they're beaten have healthier relationships with other people and are healthier adults than those who are completely ignored. I remember this because there was a study uh, that they did with the children that were in, I don't know, Kosovo or something, Yugoslavia. And I remember watching this story when I was a teenager where the children that were left alone in the cribs were worse off than the ones that were abused because the ones that were abused, they were getting something. They were, they were interacting with someone. There was engagement there. A father who beats your, whoops the child, you know, spare the rod, spoil the child, right? I, I don't know the way to say it, but beating, right? Get beatings. That's, that's emotion, that's feeling, that's love. It's love to, train, my, to train your child. My dad trains plants. And in order to train these plants, right, like he, he makes beautiful sculptures out of them, he's got to snip, he's got to cut pieces off. Anyway, so this video is not about the virtues of whooping your kid. That's not my point. My point is, David Goggins is a beta male because he rejects his father. A little bit more on what I discovered when I started researching him. So, like I said, you know, I may be talking about things that I don't know about because I don't really follow David, not that I have anything against him, it's just not one of the people I follow. But I decided to do a little bit of research before making this video just to see, you know, if anything's changed. And I noticed that he has a video with, I think the guy's name is Chris Williamson, who um, interviews him, and uh, he, David, uh, it sounds like he made an attempt to reconcile with his father. He says he went, and go, he went to go visit the demon, he said. I, you know, I get it that our parents imprint some things on us that maybe we don't want, but it almost sounded like he wasn't calling his masochism the demon, his needing to beat himself up the demon, and his resentment towards his father the demon. It sounded like he was calling his dad the demon. He was like, I had to go confront the demon. Like, the demon is on the inside of you, David, and that's not a bad thing. God gives us unique demons to bring our best out. 
and your best is out because your dad beat you. You wouldn't be David Goggins. So that very demon that you confronted is the demon of your salvation. You are who you are because God allowed you to battle that demon. If you didn't battle that demon, you wouldn't be the David Goggins that we know. You'd still be that fat guy or that guy that, or, or a guy that wouldn't subject himself to that kind of fight against the demon. That, that demon is your deliverance, my man. But anyway, back to the father situation. So he goes and he visits the demon, and the conversation he has with Williamson does not sound like reconciliation. It sounds like curiosity. It sounds like I had to go see this guy because I want to know why I'm the way I am. Again, I don't know how bad the relationship was, but it does not sound like a reconciliation. It doesn't sound like forgiveness. That's what I'm saying. It doesn't sound like you forgive your dad. Now, here's, here's a problem with this. Here's why David Goggins is a beta male. He doesn't forgive his father, so there's no reconciliation there. The father is representative of, the father in the home is representative of God the Father. Not only do you have an animosity towards your father in most cases when you reject your father, but you reject God the Father. Not many, most atheistic type people don't have good relationships with their fathers. And that's, that's by design, the enemies of our of our culture and our world want to destroy the face of the father, God the father, father in the home, and destroy the family. So you're a beta male because, you're, because you don't have any reconciliation, meaning forgiveness of your father. He wasn't perfect. I'm not perfect. My father wasn't perfect. No fathers were perfect. And that kind of atonement would allow you to actually not confront the demon, but allow that demon, allow that wound to become a wound to really acknowledge that your birth as a, an amazing man that you are is because of that wound. So don't confront the demon like befriend the demon. I don't know how else to say that, but transmutate that. See it for what it is. But you're a beta male as long as you hold that resentment towards your father and not, and not being able to see the things that I'm talking about. That's number one. Number two, a lot of times associated with this type of experience is a mommy savior complex. Now, again, I don't remember the book completely, but I know that you probably have disordered emotional attachments to mommy. This is what happens in this culture. When there's a resentment of the father, it then becomes, now I need to save my mother. And that's why we have a culture of mommy's boys. Mommy savior shit. And, you got, and the, 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 that mommy savior shit, here's more beta male. That mommy savior shit I don't know if it's true or not, but I see it manifesting itself in the fact that David Goggins has multiple women with multiple children. And I very rarely, or I, again, I don't watch him too much, but I don't see him out there trying to be a good dad, trying to be a good father. The multiple women, I have a child with this one, I have a child with that one, that's a beta male thing. It's a beta male thing in that, especially in our world today, I'm not talking about polygamy, but in our world today, generally speaking, most of us are going to be with a person, where there's a person. And if you choose a person based on your traumas, meaning she reminds me of mama, that's not going to work because she'll resent you. And I don't know how those relationships broke up. I'm thinking about your first child, and this is Wikipedia shit, so... You know, maybe you spoke about this or he spoke about this. That first relationship, I don't know what happened there, but I'm sure that it has something to do with that woman not needing you, you needing her, he needing her. Neediness, I want to save you, right? And then, of course, you know, I don't want to go too far down that rabbit hole, and then there's the other woman. I think he was once married, and then that was broke up also, and, you know. So mommy savior uh, complex, not really a father figure. You've broken families. He's broken families. He's from a broken family, has perhaps a broken relationship with God the Father, and cre is creating fa broken families, right? And that doesn't mean I'm not saying that David Goggins is a bad guy. I, 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 when I do see him, I see a lot of heart, right? Like my, when I, I, the way I feel him when I watch him, because I think that's why a lot of people enjoy him, is that big heart. He just seems like he's got a big heart, like, you know, a lot of courage, a lot of strength, right? But once again, 
at what expense? Is it because you're still fighting against your dad? Or can you transmutate and lift up, venerate your father and God the Father and fatherhood and be a good father? Right? I don't know. These things only seem like they're happening. But if there was going to be some advice that I give, let me start wrapping this up. You know, I know, I know David Goggins is not asking me for advice. And I also saw, I see like headlines, you know, video titles and stuff. Doesn't mean I click them. There was one that, where he says, I love the hate. Of course you love the hate because you love being beat, bro. He says, I love the hate. I love when people hate me. That's, that's the sign of someone who invites beatings, right? I'm not, it's, I know there are all the feminists and, you know, victim people out there going to be like, oh, Elliot Hull said that David Goggins deserved to be beat because he wanted to. That's not what I'm saying. That's not what I'm saying. I'm not saying you wanted to get beat. But you sure subject yourself to a lot of pain out there, bro. So this is not hate at all. It's not hate at all. In fact, like I said, I feel his heart. Like I have compassion towards the guy. Not like a compassion like, uh, like I'm trying to save him. You don't need anybody to save him. In fact, masochists don't want advice from anybody. We'll, we'll resist to the death. Like, you giving me advice? That's when I go like this. I'm not listening, right? So I know you're not listening to me. I'm just making content, making videos here and shit. So well, I'm going to give some advice to David, David Goggins. David Goggins asked me for some advice. What kind of advice would I give David Goggins? Number one, forgive your father. you got to forgive your father. you got to truly... So... Neville Goddard puts it this way. He says, forgiveness is not just letting go and forgetting or even feeling good about what the person did. It's literally replaying your experience with that person in your mind, in your imagination, in a more resourceful way. You could do that totally in your imagination and just imagine your dad is the man that you want him to be. Or you could reframe your experience with your father and see what I saw when I read your book. I don't know, I wasn't in your situation. But I saw, damn, this guy's a pretty cool dude. He's a G. So forgiveness is about, is, is about reconciling in your mind by playing a brand new picture or using a brand new paradigm. And I think that might be a good idea, Doc Goggins. So that's number one, open your heart to your father. When you open your heart to your father, I would also invite you to open your heart to God the Father too because all of our fathers are fallen and there's only one perfect pattern, paternity, and that is God the Father, right? And when we open ourselves up to that perfect pattern and that perfect example of God in Christ who lives in you, you're the strongest version of yourself all around. You are, that's alpha male right there at its finest. Father, 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 father. That's, a, that's what an alpha male is. Father, 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 father. You got all these beta males walking around acting like they're alpha and they don't even have any children. You don't get to be alpha until you start breeding, bro. But anyway, so open yourself up to God, Father, and be a good father, Goggins. I don't know what your relationship is like with your children. I have no idea. But, you, but you, you, you're boning and leaving. You have illegitimate children. That's not, a good, that's not a good look for a man who claims to want to see men live better lives. And it doesn't support the cause of restored fatherhood, right? So, I, of course, I, you can't do anything about it now, but, yeah, be a good father to the best that you can, and you'll be an example to the world that hates the father. This world hates fathers. We don't need any more bad fathers. Please, Goggins and those who are in the front. And then ultimately, that leads us to all, all men who are impressed by a guy like Goggins being raised up, reconciling, truly reconciling with their wounds that they have with their earthly fathers and returning to God the Father and being good fucking fathers. Done.